Hey guys, we're back on 30 Second Scale Aircraft again this week. This time we're looking at Haskawa Minicraft's 130 Second Scale P26A. Now this is an older kit. Um, the earliest version of this mold I could find uh, dated back to the early 80s. And this particular boxing was about mid vintage to late 80s, early 90s. Uh, most recent one I could find of this kit it being reissued in some form was from 2005. So this is something that's been out of production for a while. But let's t open our on up and take a look. Now, right away, uh, you can tell to some degree just the age of this kit. Um, overall, starting with here on the wings, the amount of surface detailing is pretty minimal. Um, there's the slightest impression of uh, panel lining, but I cannot for the life of me tell if they're supposed to be raised or recessed. Uh, it's almost non-existent. So I, I can't rule out they're supposed to be raised or not. I feel like a slight bit of raising to it, but only just. So call it raised, but just uh, probably because of the where the mold was in the life cycle, um, it's basically gone. So you don't get a lot of detail there. Um, obviously, you do get a recessed line for the control surfaces on the wing. And also as an added plus, they do include holes for the rigging. So that's a nice plus right there. Uh, moving on to the lower surface, uh, much the same, albeit the detailing there is a little more pronounced. Uh, again, the same rigging holes. But surprisingly, they also include some internal ribbing detail. Um, obviously, it won't be seen, but it's just nice to know that it's there. Uh, continuing on for the rest of the sprue, we've got obviously our front dash panel, which, despite the age of the kits, not terrible. So that is a plus there. Our seat, uh, with some slight molded on uh, seat belt detail. Hopefully this will show up on camera. As well as our main cockpit tub. Not super detailed there. And a pilot figure. Uh, this is much the same as ones we saw on some of uh, Hasegawa's other kits. It's pretty moderate in detail. Um, but given that how it's split, I would say it's probably skippable. Uh, in addition on this brew, we've got a couple of bombs, some of the parts for those, and most of the engine and our main single prop. Obviously, this kit's not super complex given its age, so we're already on to our fuselage halves, the landing gear, and the cowling. Now, the internal detailing here in the cockpit area sidewalls is actually serviceable for the age. I mean, it's not great, but it's not terrible either. And hopefully this is showing up on camera. It's, you know, it's just sort of average, especially given the age. Uh, we also have our two main machine guns. Uh, detailing them is on the mess side. Um, obviously, it could be better, but it's not terrible either. Some of their heads, a couple of other odds and ends, control stick, wheels, and additional engine detail parts. Uh, wheels themselves are... Unfortunately, uh, we'll require you to assemble prior to painting. Is unfortunately closes up inside these uh, wheel guards. Uh, so I would say you may have to get creative if you want to uh, paint them right. Else you're probably going to end up only painting half the wheel. And that's basically it. Save for this one single windscreen clear part. Uh, overall, typical Hasegawa quality, uh, nicely detailed and is serviceable. Now, we move on 
to arguably what I'd call the low point of this kit, or at least of my copy, the decals. The decals that came with mine are toast. These things are going to be unusable. So obviously with older kits, that's something you're going to be have to be aware of and watch out for. Now obviously, uh, you do get a decent uh, option markings with this kit, but as I said, these decals are so roached, uh, I can't even adequately review them. They're, they're super yellowed, and I honestly feel like if I stick them in water, they're going to break immediately. So that is a bit of a minus. Now, moving on to the instruction sheet, which is really poorly planned out in terms of how they laid it out, but... Starting here, build up the external ordnance, the engine, and cockpit for slapping it all together in the fuselage and putting the wings together. Uh, they really offer only minor information as far as exact rigging. Now, obviously, they could do a little better job showing how to get together, but they do include it, so that is a bit of a plus. Now, as for marking options, uh, you've got given three different planes to use. Again, obviously, their paint and detailing guides not the best. But overall, you know, it's a serviceable kit. So, what do I think? This kit is definitely long in the tooth. Is it a terrible kit? No. No, it's got its quirks, good and bad. But it's one of the few kits out there that carries the P26. Uh, and since time of this recording, we're only a couple months out from the death of Wingnut Wings. This is one I think could have been a good subject matter for Wingnuts to do, as it's sort of in that transition period, so you'd be able to potentially appeal to World War One aviation enthusiasts and more closer to World War Two aviation enthusiasts. So, fortunately, that's one of those things I guess we'll never get to see. But in terms of this kit, it's okay. It's not terrible, but it's not great. It's sort of in the middle. Obviously, having decals be terrible in mine. I, I can't adequately view them. So I would say hopefully you can find a more recent version of this kit that might have serviceable decals. So that was a look at Hasegawa Minicraft's 132nd scale P26A. Good middle of the road kit with an equal amounts of good and bad. So until next time.